Hey, in this video, we're gonna break down the four phases you must go through to be successful as a transformational deep dive coach. It's gonna be eye-opening, especially when you realize that most people don't make it to phase two. Don't be one of those people. All right, everyone, welcome to this video. We're gonna talk about not toggles, but this is this is good stuff. If you didn't see this video, uh, go watch this video on how to sell transformation in an attention economy. Really important to understand what the world is that you're operating in and what's going on with the people that you're trying to help. So today in this video, we're going to talk about the four stages of transformational coaching mastery. Now, transformational coaching is different than informational coaching. It's different than motivational coaching. This is transformational coaching. This is the deeper work. If you want to do the deeper work, you don't have to. Nobody ever has to. But if you want to do the deeper work, you've got to be prepared to do the deeper work. And in your preparation to do that deeper work, you're going to go through several different stages. Oh, I hate me some bad dry erase markers. Four stages of transformational, hopefully you can hear the sounds too. Four stages of transformational coaching mastery. Everybody goes through these stages. You can't skip steps. What, whoa. What most people are doing, that actually probably looks pretty cool. What most people are doing, I won't give away the magic trick secret. What most people are doing is expecting stage four results with only stage one or phase one effort. And the next time that works will be never. So the first phase or the first stage is what we call introductory information. Intro information. So if you are excited about anything, now these phases work with virtually any kind of mastery level learning, any kind of thing that's going to require evolution, uh, especially creativity. So it's not just coaching. But I think a lot of people don't understand the creativity element of coaching and the evolutionary element of becoming a really good coach, again, especially in the transformational coaching world. So these phases are going to apply to other things as well. The first phase is introductory information. And so if you get interested in something, then you're going to want information on it, right? This could be getting uh, your first certification. It could be watching some videos. It could be reading certain things. But introductory information is surface level. It has to be surface level because it's introductory. If it's too deep, then it won't be introductory information anymore, right? So the first phase is Require, all these phases are required. The only problem is that when people try to skip phases or have expectations that don't align with what phase they're actually in. So introductory information is where you start learning about the information. But if this information understands, like whoever the facilitator is or the trainer, the coach, the teacher, if this information understands that there's three phases after it, then it will set you up for those three phases. If it doesn't understand that there are three phases after it, then it will only set you up for failure. Let's drink to that one. And guess what? Most introductory information doesn't understand there's three phases after it. So, if people only learn information at an introductory level and then that's all that they teach, then everything just keeps getting sort of watered down and passed along. 
but nobody's actually being prepared for the next three phases. So if introductory information knows that there are three phases after it, then it will start teaching you the introduction to fundamentals. It won't teach you fads. It won't teach you quick fixes. It won't teach you shortcuts. It won't teach you any of that stuff because it knows there are three more phases and you're going to need fundamentals when you get into the next phases. But if all it cares about is getting your money or getting your attention or getting your consumption here only, then it doesn't care about all that stuff. It doesn't matter. You can go out and fail. You can buy a ticket to the moon and go die in space or when you get there, it doesn't matter because this is only designed to get you there and that's it for so much of the information out there. And we live in such a shallow, flattened experience that we think introductory information is like, that's all, you know, that's all that's available, right? So when it comes to this phase, you have to learn like the bigness of the arena that you're going into, the bigness of the concepts. For instance, in our company, this for us is called BCC. It's an introductory information. It's an introductory certification. And the main thing that we talk about in BCC is human behavior, not coaching techniques. Coaching techniques don't even come till when? Module what? Five, six, seven? Yeah. Like, I mean, I hadn't even really thought about that. The coaching techniques that most people think are should be the first information isn't until like 10 hours into the course because without the foundation, then the techniques don't matter. And so we don't want to give you a false sense of security and a false sense of confidence and then go out there and not understand the foundations. We also teach the foundational principles of coaching, not just the, you know, just the little specifics. We don't just give you the icing, right? We teach you the bigness of it all because that's required for you to then find yourself in the bigness of all of this. And there's some practicing that happens here when you start implementing some of that information, but the, the, the amount of confidence and certainty that you can get is limited because introductory information doesn't have the capacity to build deep rooted certainty, right? So that's the, the area that I'm gonna spend the most amount of time on just in this video, because this is where almost everybody is. And this is what is almost always on the shelves that we are buying. These are the short dopamine fixes. And that's one of the reasons why people don't actually get to the point where they feel really confident in themselves and certain in themselves. The second phase is what we call immersive implementation, right? Immersive implementation. Oh, that sound. Whew, the sound and the smell, just fantastic. So hopefully you know, if you've listened to any of our videos that we've talked about information versus implementation, you know, information doesn't have the ability to change anybody's life. You, only implementation does. So the only reason to consume information is to implement it. If you consume information and don't implement information, you, it would have been better for you to not consume it. It's better to not collect something if you're not going to use it, right? Because otherwise you're just carrying around like emotional and intellectual weight. And there's a lot more overwhelm. There's a lot more distractions and actually adds to a lot of your doubt and your imposter syndrome and all that stuff being over-informed and under-implemented. So the only reason to pick up information is to implement it as quickly as you can. But if you want to do the deep work, it's got to be implemented in an immersive experience. What does that mean? Primarily that means a live event. In the coaching world, it means a live event. Now, in today's world, a lot of those live events are online. Back in the day, it was only in person, and there's still a bunch of in-person events nowadays as well. But you've got to immerse yourself in the water. you got to immerse yourself in the essence. you got to immerse yourself in the energy of the thing that you're wanting to learn. That's immersive implementation. And when you do that, you will see that bigness, all the foundations, you'll see it be applied. You'll see it applied in demonstrations that you're watching. You'll experience it as a client. You'll experience practicing it as a coach. And then it starts to get into your body 
a little bit more, right? At this level, you start to become more certain in the information itself. At this level, you can only be confident in the information. There is no certainty at this level. It doesn't happen. It cannot happen. Not for deep work coaching. Only confidence intellectually in the information. And then if you go to phase two, that confidence in the information starts to become certainty in the information. Certainty in the bigness, right? But then since you are implementing some of this and you're in this environment where you're seeing all kinds of things and there's a bunch of different layers of learning, now you start to be confident in your skill set. You're certain in the information, but only confident in your skill set. So what does that mean? You can't actually get personally certain at this level because there's not enough time. Personal certainty requires time. It requires repetition. It requires space. It requires failure. It requires learning. It requires support. It requires you asking yourself, what the hell am I doing? And am I ever going to get this? It requires all of that stuff. And that requires time. It requires time on the calendar and time on the clock. That's why personal certainty will never happen in an immersive event. The immersive event is required, but the certainty comes after it, right? So that third phase is what we call isolated iteration, yeah? Iteration. Got a bunch of I words here. I want to make sure I write them up there properly. Um, before we go here, I wrote in parentheses ECCP. In our company, ECCP is this. It's immersive implementation. It's phase two. It's how you take the information that you'll learn in the introductory phase and start to bring it to life and start to live in it and start to bathe in it and start to really fully understand and experience the emotions of it and the, the energy and witness what's possible. All of that happens at ECCP for our company. We have an ECCP coming up. It's five days. It's online this year again, or this, this uh, one coming up. It's online, so you can join from the comfort of wherever you are. Uh, if you're not in BCC, you can get both of these, and you have enough time to consume as much of BCC as you possibly can so that you're prepared for ECCP. And if you have any questions about any of this stuff, if you have any questions about the content, anything at all we ever do, you can book a free call at coachshawnsmith.com forward slash book my call. So if you have any questions about any of these steps and if it's a good fit for you and all that sort of stuff, let us know. Uh, ECCP has a two-year ticket um, lifetime also. So if you can't join us, these dates coming up, which are April 24th through 28th, then the ticket is good for two years. You can extend it out and we'll tell you the dates ahead of time and you'll be able to uh, you know, make arrangements and make sure that you can join us. So that is ECCP. If you want more information on that, you read a bunch of the stories from students and all the information broken down, you can go to coachshawnsmith.com forward slash ECCP, which stands for Elite Coaching Certification Program. That is phase two. It's required. I don't think most people ever do this. I'm going to start asking. Let's start asking this question. How many of you have gone to a five-day immersive event? And most people haven't. And if they have, it hasn't been designed to continue this process. Just getting together for five days doesn't mean it's actually designed to give you progress here. It just means you're, you're together for five days. So the number of people that go to an immersive experience, I think, is very small percentage-wise. And then the number of people that go to an immersive experience that's designed to set you up for the next two phases almost never happens. Because just like this doesn't know about the other phases, a lot of people uh, create content here and this content itself doesn't know about the other phases. So you've got to be set up for the phases that you're going into. This third one is isolated information. What that means is you individually start to iterate. Now, iteration means you try and you try again and you adjust and you learn and you try again and you fall and you fail and you wonder and you cry and you doubt and you, you know, you get, you get frustrated, and, but then you keep learning. And so that's all a part of growth. If any of you think that you're going to achieve any level of mastery in any area of life at all 
without frustration, without doubt, without worry, without wonder, without failure, without any of the stuff that you're probably trying to avoid, then you're delusional because it doesn't come in any other package than the way it comes. And you can't negotiate with it. You can't go like, hey, um, I really want to be phenomenally good as, as, a, as, a, as a pianist, right? But I just don't want to go through the learning process. So can you just like get me to that 10,000 hours mark where I could just get up in front of everybody and do a... That's, that's, that's the piano sound at, at a mastery level. But I just want to skip all the learning phases, right? Most people want to do that. Our brains will always want to do that. And it only happens never. So isolated iteration is when you are practicing, but you're also practicing in an isolated way, meaning the skills that you learn, the individual coaching techniques need to be practiced individually. They need to be isolated. Just like you go to a gym, part of working out is isolating certain muscles. And then you isolate this muscle and none of the other muscles are working or just a couple other muscles are working. And that's what actually builds up that individual muscle. Too many people are not doing isolated iterations so they never build up their skill set. And here, certainty in yourself can happen, but it only happens in phase three. So if most people are only here and confidence is all that's available here, and most people never get here, so uh, certainty in the information is, is not available for most people, and confidence in themselves is actually not available for most people because you don't get confidence up here in yourself. You just get confidence in the information. Then you'll understand why most people fail. Because most people don't have anything more than confidence in the information. They don't even have confidence in themselves, let alone certainty in the information or themselves. And without that certainty, 0% of the marketing strategies will work. Zero. And I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up to zero. Because actually, marketing strategies that you know are correct, coupled with no certainty, is worse than you not doing anything. It's worse because it will do damage to you. And this is why so many really qualified, well-meaning, highly intelligent, committed people never make it because they just don't understand this process and they're expecting phase four confidence and certainty and authority and stability and trust and all that stuff. And all they've done is read some stuff. It's not going to happen. So at, at this phase, you start to have certainty in yourself. You've already got certainty in the information. Now you have certainty in yourself. Now when you have certainty in the information and yourself, you are a dangerous combination. But not in a good way. Because what you're probably going to do is vomit all over a bunch of people. Because your certainty after going through all of this stuff doesn't speak the same language as where you were and where most people are before they even get into any of this. So part of the phase, for part of the, the transition from phase three to four is actually vomiting on a bunch of people, blowing their wigs back, and them going, uh, I think you're in a cult. I think you, you uh, we need to talk or we need to never talk again, right? People need to give you this like WTF reaction because you're going to be so lit up. It, it would be like a concert pianist talking to somebody who's never sat down on a piano bench going, oh, can you imagine when you do this and then you do this and then you use your pinky and then you do this and then you're like, um, what are the black and, and white things? Are like, I don't even know what these are. What, what, like, bing, bing. But you're just talking like in concert pianist language, right? That's part of the process. We want you to confuse people. We want you to talk with so much excitement, but at a high level that people go, I don't know what you're on. Because that's part of mastery trying to communicate with amateurs. Oh, that's part of you trying to go this is amazing. I got the cure for stuff. I can help people. I've seen all kinds of stuff happening, but you don't have the language yet 
to meet them here. So from a marketing standpoint and a messaging standpoint, you don't have confidence or certainty yet, but you have certainty in the information and in yourself. And that's a really weird combination to have. It's a very frustrating place for a lot of people to be and it's required. So if you're here, congratulations. Now, how do we know all this stuff? Because we've just seen so many people go through this. We facilitate this all the time. And it's so interesting when we go, hmm, these people are phenomenal coaches. They can change anybody's life, but they're not getting clients. Oh, it's because, yeah, they're just vomiting on everybody. It's just this is the, like the fire hose phase, right? The fire hose transition. And that's all part of it. So you have to you have to test your messages. You have to try stuff. You have to reach out to people. You have to get told that you that you might be an alien. Like you have to. That's part of all of this. But you got to keep going. And this final phase is individual, right? Individual iteration. This is where you get pushed out of the nest. This is where you test your own wings. This is where you make your own decisions. This is where you keep shifting and adjusting, but on your own. Now that doesn't mean nobody's there with you. You need support in this phase, but you need to be doing the decision-making. If you're not doing the decision-making, you can never reach mastery level. It's impossible to become a master constantly following directions. Impossible. If you've always got your piano teacher looking over your shoulder, go do this, do this, do this, this, you'll never become a master pianist because it's not possible. You have to have individual iteration. Now, why do most people fail here? Because they didn't get prepared all the way up here. This all works together. It has to work together. It's all required. So most people only are here, but they expect results from down here. And that's the biggest problem in this whole process that we see all of the time. If you knew what the path looked like and you knew what it could produce and you sign up for the process, you will succeed. You can't not succeed if you understand the process so you don't freak yourself out with you know, unfair expectations. And when you hit the roadblocks of phase three, you knew those were the roadblocks. Like we already predicted it for you. We could predict every experience that you'll have. Why? Because we've done it and we've helped so many people do it and we actually pay attention. Like, oh, this is what people experience here. This is what people experience here. So if you know the path, and you keep going, you can't fail. I don't know when, the times might differ, there's variation, but you cannot fail. And my hope for you is that you give yourself the experience of growth. You give yourself the experience because how you think about yourself and how you feel about yourself down here is truly incomprehensible when you're up here. That means, you don't even know what's possible, but it's only possible if you go through the path. So I hope you'll join us. If you have any questions, let us know, book a call or ask a question and we'll come to you in another video. Hopefully you liked that video and you realize what phase you're in and what your next step is. Speaking of that, check out that video where we helped one of our clients design a personalized game plan to get to her next level. Cause it's just, I'll get there later and I'm not ready yet. And I haven't coached enough people yet. And I haven't done the online course yet. And I haven't done all these things yet. Right.